I encourage you to follow along in your own Bibles. There are uh, Bibles in the pews if you need them. Uh, it'll be up on the screen as well. And if you don't have a Bible uh, to study in during the week, let us know. We want to make sure that you have this Word in your hands so that you can get to know it for yourself. Not just because we tell you it says something. We want you to read it and discern and learn and know what God is saying to you. So hear God's Word this morning. But I have said these things to you, so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because they do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to my Father and he will see me no longer. About judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak on His own, but will speak whatever He hears. And He will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because He will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that He will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is God's Word for God's people. Thanks be to God. We pray with you. Almighty God, as we open up your word this morning, we ask that you will speak to us. Lord, whatever it is we need to hear this morning, you know. You know the state of our hearts. You know what we're holding back from you. You know where you want to work for a healing into our lives. So Holy Spirit, come into the deepest parts of us and speak to us at the point of our heart. Tune our minds, our ears, and our hearts to know your voice and to tell it apart from all others. Speak to us, God. Whatever words I may offer, but you would speak to us. That we may know and do your will and yours alone. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. It was a wonderful blessing to have Team Challenge with us this morning and to uh, get to hear your testimonies and, and your mission and, and what the Lord is doing for you guys. And uh, I, we, we kind of already had a message this morning, and I just want to share a, a few words with you uh, as we prepare to go out this morning. And I'm going to expand on this more next week, but I want to talk to you a little bit about this passage this morning. We've been reading over the last few weeks these words out of the latter part of John. This is the conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples towards the end of his earthly ministry. Most likely, this conversation is happening uh, at the Last Supper or in the hours that follow. Uh, there are some that say because John tends to organize things by topic rather than by strict uh, chronology, that it's possible that some of this is also being said to them after his resurrection, before the ascension. Uh, there's some back and forth on that. But he's giving them these words, these promises. And he says to them that it is good he is leaving so that he can send the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, to be with you. This word here, uh, uh, Advocate, as uh, parakletos in the Greek, uh, it means uh, someone who is called alongside to help. Uh, it can be used in a legal sense as one's advocate, defender, intercessor. Uh, it can be someone who gives protection, help, security. It can be a comforter or a counselor. And indeed, we see some of these words applied to the Holy Spirit. Our comforter, our advocate, our counselor. Jesus, when he came here on this earth, the Son, who was already pre-existent, limited himself to a single earthly form. All the power of God packed into something five, six feet tall. It's hard to fathom that, to be 
begin with. It's even harder to fathom that all of that acts into two cells at some point. And yet, when he was here on the earth, he was in a single place at a single time, right? Jesus wanders around through the course of his ministry, going from city to city and having impacts where he goes. People come out into the middle of nowhere to hear him, but he's always in one place at one time. And he tells the disciples he's getting ready to leave. And I know if I was one of the disciples, I would have some problem with this, right? I mean, think about it for a second. You've been wandering around with this guy for three years, learning from him, learning to be like him. We've talked about this before. If, if you are a Jewish disciple of a rabbi, of a teacher, you're not just learning a subject. Your goal is to become like that person. And so they are patterning their lives after him. And at the end of this three-year journey, he says, okay, I'm going to leave now. I kind of get why the disciples argued with him about the cross. No, I want to learn more. There's still so much left you have to teach me. But look what he does. He sends the Holy Spirit. Because here's the thing. If Jesus had resurrected, was in his fully resurrected form, still wandering around the earth today, we'd still have to go find him somewhere. Yes, I believe he would come be traveling all over the world. Going from place to place to place. But I, I don't know if you've ever been to like a Billy Graham crusade or like what Franklin Graham is doing uh, uh, tonight. One of these big rallies where you have these, these people who are uh, amazing folks and amazing uh, Christian leaders. I don't know if you've ever been to one of those, but you don't get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with Billy Graham when you go to a Billy Graham crusade. Have you noticed that? I have been to multiple third-day concerts. I have never gotten to have a conversation with Matt Powell. Okay? I have been to numerous different things like this where I've never had that chance for that one-on-one -on -one that I really wanted. One of my, uh, my mom's favorite artists, one of my favorite, my favorite artists, Michael Card, came to my, uh, came to the college that was across the street from my seminary one time. We didn't even know the concert was happening until my wife and I are sitting in one of the lobbies. We're sitting there studying and Michael Card was walking through the lobby and we're like, what the with Jesus probably if he was still walking around in human form but it said he went up to the Father sent the Holy Spirit to be God's presence here with us so that wherever we go whatever we do we would have the presence of God with us to teach us to lead us to guide us to direct us to pass on everything we need to know so that wherever we go wherever life takes us. Whatever we are going through, no matter what weird time of the night, no matter what out in the middle of nowhere place, in the center of a giant crowd or completely isolated, we could have the presence of God here with us. Hear me today. If you are in Christ, if you have accepted Him as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit with you right now. You do not have to do life alone. We'll talk more about what all of that means next week. We'll get into some deeper detail, but I just want you to walk away this morning knowing the Holy Spirit is with you to lead you, to guide you, to teach you, to shape you, to set you free. Wherever you go, God is with you. Paul in Ephesians 
chapter 1. It talks about the Holy Spirit as the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people. You know, one of these days, we're going to be in heaven. And I know we all look forward to that in different ways. We sing songs about it, and about the sweet by and by, about how I'll fly away some glad morning when this life is over. We sing about what it's going to be like. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. We think about that. And about being fully in his presence. And what are we going to be able to do? Are we going to be singing? Are we going to be dumbstruck? I don't know. There does seem to be a lot of singing going on in Revelation, though. So just keep that in mind. Everything we do here is choir work. But we have a piece of that today. Because the guarantee of that promise to come is the presence of the Holy Spirit with us here day by day. So know that wherever you go, whatever you do, the Lord walks with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Holy Spirit, precious Jesus, Creator Father, come. Holy Spirit, come and flood us afresh and anew this day. That wherever our travels take us, whatever we are going through, Lord, remind us of your presence here with us. Help us to be sensitive to your voice. To know it in the midst of our day, in the midst of our challenges. To receive all that you have taught us. And to walk in your ways wherever we go. Holy Spirit, lead us. Guide us. Teach us. Shape us. Pass along the teachings of Jesus to our hearts day by day and mold us that in being not conformed to this world but by tr being transformed by a work of renewal we may know your will and do it in this world in Jesus name we pray Amen